Okay, what is up, fellow men? What is happening? Uh, super excited to be here on another weekly Wednesday training that I'm doing every week. I'm doing a new training, uh, a new Wednesday training for free for first responder dads and fathers that want to create an elite marriage and they want to be elite husbands and dads so that they can pass on to future generations. And really, you think about it, that's probably like one of the most important things you can do as a father or dad is carrying on that legacy generation to generation, because how you act is going to transform future generations when you think about it. And I know that I'm excited because I'm going to share today with one of my favorite communication strategies that has really just transformed my marriage and even my relationship with my kids. Because when you understand this framework and how to communicate more effectively, you're more confident in how you can communicate and you're actually more willing to take that action to communicate. I know as a dad, um, you know, I had a lot of difficulty. I'm sorry, as a husband, I had a lot of difficulty communicating with my wife because we're just so different. And my wife likes to raise her voice and, you know, go up a little oct octave, if you will, and, and raise her voice. I'm not like that. And I, I just, the way my family was raised, I didn't do that. So I didn't raise my voice. I'm very just kind of even toned. And so when someone raises their voice, I don't like to fight fire with fire, but I also feel like when someone's raising their voice, they're disrespecting me. So I would actually be very passive aggressive and avoid conversations. And I'm sure many of you feel like that where your wife actually, have you, have you guys ever experienced this where your wife will actually kind of like follow you into the other room, like trying to get an answer from you? Like, Joel, come on, answer me. Why won't you answer me? Why won't you talk? Tell me how you're feeling. I'm like, I've already told you how I'm feeling. There's nothing else to tell you. I've made my point. Oh, no, no. I've got more to ask you. I've got more questions. If you, anybody has felt that way, drop me a comment below and just let me know. I'm doing live right now. So yeah, drop me a comment and let me know how that resonates when your wife is following you into another room and barraging you. Even if it feels like you're being harassed, like, come on, tell me like what you think. How do you feel? I mean, it's, it's annoying, right? And you don't want to do that. And so I know being a first responder for almost 15 years in the police force, what the job had done to me and also how I detached a lot, right? I detached from emotions and, and just, it was very difficult for me to even feel emotions because that was my job for survival. And I think also my upbringing really helped bring that along too. I think many people can resonate with that. And that led to a marriage that was unfulfilled, disconnected, distant at many times. And I've been married for 11 years and uh, it was like that for the majority of the marriage. And I'm sure many of you are living an invisible divorce where if I told you right now that you could be divorced, you probably would get divorced. The only thing that's separating you from doing that is the fact that you have kids or you're just too scared to actually pull the trigger. Maybe there's a scarcity mindset, but most of you are probably living this invisible marriage. Raise your hand if that's you. I can, I'm, I'm with you, you know, 11 years I've been married and made a lot of mistakes. Um, and to the point too, with my kids having two boys, um, I, I've been in situations where they would spit at me. They would kick me. I mean, I'd have to leave the house and walk out of the house because I just didn't know how to deal with it. And again, it wasn't my nature to raise my voice and get angry. And it didn't seem very productive, me being there. You know, if you spank the kids, that didn't work. If you yell at the kids, that didn't work. If I was getting to their eye level and being empathetic, that didn't work. So dude, communication guys is super important. Can we not agree with that? Like super, super important. And that's why I'm excited to get into this training because I think it's going to help a lot of men. And so that's what we're going to go over today. How do we be an effective communicator? And therefore, if you're an effective communicator, you're an effective leader. Yeah. So super powerful. And again, for anybody that I didn't even really introduce myself, myself other than being a first responder for almost 15 years, I've dedicated my life to life coaching, health coaching uh, as well. I'm a big, very big natural uh, health uh, advocate. I came out with my book in May of 2023. It's called Ignite. If you can see it, I got a blur effect going on here and on my uh, Insta, uh, Facebook and stuff. So it's not, it's hard to see. But the book's called Ignite by Joel Evan. Go check it out. It is a book about unlocking your human potential, not only just your mindset, your heart set, but also your health. And if you can really, if you can prioritize those things, you're going to ignite your life. Working on the second book right now, which will be about marriage and being an elite dad and husband. So stay tuned for that. But if you're trying to, if you're if you're feeling a little lost and you're trying to ignite your health, vision, and you're trying to be a better executor, definitely the book Ignite is for you. Drop me a line, DM me, or shoot me an email at I'll throw it up here. Shoot me an email info at Joel Evan Coaching, and I will I'll send you the book for free if you want it. Um, you just got to pay for shipping, and so we'll totally work that out. 
And then also I'm doing these weekly live Wednesday trainings for first responder men that want to uplevel their game. So if you're not in the Facebook group already, DM me, reach out to me, and let's get you in there so you can be surrounded by a community of men who want to uplevel you. And that was also very transformative in my process of becoming a better dad and husband was being around other men, a men's group, if you will, and other men to help sharpen my sword, being around your wife or even in therapy, none of that worked. And um, that really helped transform my life among some of the tactics and skills I'm going to share with you today. And so let's get it off. Let's start it off, guys. One of the things that comes up is when you're, how do we start a conversation with uh, our women, especially when they're angry, right? They're angry at us and we don't want to even deal with the conversation. We're kind of avoiding it, right? So one of the things that will happen is we will say things like, why are you mad now? <laughs> why are you, why are you so upset? What's the big deal? Don't sweat the small stuff. That's something I would say, like, why are you getting all upset over this? It's a big nothing. And so one of the things, maybe you can rephrase that and reframe it is, hey, I'm sensing a little bit of tension between us. Can we have a dialogue? Can we have a chat? I'm sensing some tension between us. I'm sensing some tension building between us. Let's have some dialogue. Can we chat? Try that on for size. Let me know how that works. Just that little rephrasing is going to be extremely powerful, okay, with your, with your wife. Now, the first step when you're broaching a new conversation with your wife and you're trying to communicate effectively and powerfully, okay, is the first step in this is you got to be doing something called active listening. Really, really hard for us. Anybody for your wife or your the, the man or the woman, when you engage in communication, it's always you're trying to get something. That's the that's the mindset, anyways. Is I'm trying to tell you and prove to you my point and why I'm right and why you're wrong. And I know you're going to give me something. You're going to tell to me something that is uh, that is you know you're going to tell me probably something that is your side of the story. I don't really want to hear it because at the end of the day, I know that I'm right and that uh, you're wrong. And so if that is, that's usually most of us what we do, right? We're not actively listening. So I would tell you, number one, is you got to reframe your mindset and your heart set. And how are you going to engage with this person? Number one, don't be thinking about winning an argument. I want you to simply think about being an active listener and hearing what that person has to say. Like that's the only thing you need to focus on in the beginning. Over time, you're going to start winning the relationship. You're going to start earning trust. And then then you can start maybe, I don't want to say proving your point, but you can start expressing more of what you're, what you're trying to um, achieve or, or, or your point of view. That's totally fine. And even sometimes you'll have to come back later, but the goal of whatever you're trying to get to in the beginning is just to actively listen to what your wife is saying. Okay. Don't try to prove your point. Don't try to win. Don't try to tell them that uh, this is, you know, your point of view Just simply try to actively listening. So that's number one. That's the first step when you're trying to effectively communicate with your wife, your partner, or your kids is you want to actively listen to what they have to say. So bring up the, again, we're going to bring up the problem or whatever is creating the problem. And you're going to ask, actively listen to their response. You're not going to try to prove your point. After you're done actively listening, try to repeat back some of the things you heard. That's going to make them feel like they've been heard. They've been seen. They've been felt. Most of us don't feel that way. That is why we have a lot of childhood wounds and why a lot of things come up for us. And so because we're wounded, because people did not see us, people disrespected us, we don't feel felt, we don't feel seen. And so one of the easiest ways you can communicate with your wife effectively is by simply repeating back to them what you said. It's such a simple thing, guys, but we don't do it. And they, even if you're like, no, I'm actively listening, if you don't repeat back some of the things that you heard them say, I'm telling you, if you just did that, a lot of times women will just, they will, you will see the tension release from their body. Cause they're like, okay, cool. He, he, he sees what I'm feeling. He's, he senses me. He feels me. They will start to relax, continue to do that. So just repeat back what they said. That's all part of the active listening part. The second day, this is a four-step process. I should have told you it's a four-step process. So number one, active listening, repeat back what they say. Number two, you got to take ownership for yourself, your behaviors. Again, you actively listened, you you repeated back, and now you're like, all right, I'm going in for the kill. I'm going in and I'm going to tell you how I really feel. No, don't do that. It ain't happening. Not on this round anyways, not on this round. The goal is to actively listen, then take ownership for your own behavior. I guarantee 
that there's a leadership problem in your house. And I guarantee there's somewhere in your behavior where you were unconscious, you were selfish, you were lazy, you were numb, and you were offline, okay? And that's why this happened. Yes, there's a lot of problems. Yes, there's other issues that come up with the wife and the kids, and they're all to blame. Sure, it's, they're, there's equal. But at the end of the day, like Jocko Willink says, there are no bad teams. There's just bad leaders. There's just bad leaders. Where were you not communicating effectively that you didn't lead your team? That's your team, your family. That is your team. If you're not leading effectively, there's breakdowns that are happening. You got to figure out what they are. So take ownership where you focus on you. Don't focus on them, at least for right now. There's going to be a time and a place later. We can talk about that, but not right now. Okay. That's step number two. Okay. You could say this in a way too of like, your wife could be blaming you and saying like, you know, in your head, you're like, man, you, you're disrespecting me in front of the kids. I've had that happen many times and you want to address it. Like that was uncalled for. Like my values are, we don't disrespect each other in front of the kids. You violated that. Or maybe she doesn't even know that's one of your values. That could be a problem too. So you could simply even just repeat back and be like, you know what? I didn't call you out in front of the kids when you said some unkind things about me and I should have, I should have taken a stand and, and that's on me. You know, that's a simple rephrase instead of saying, you always disrespect me in front of the kids. That's just blaming, criticizing, judging. It ain't going to work. It's going to put her on the defense. For me personally, I don't even like when I take ownership, I just take ownership for me in those situations. And later I'll debrief her later, but I don't, I don't even, I won't even really say like you did this in front, but it might call for that. That's why I'm giving you that example. It might call for that if that's where the friction is lying. All right. So we got active listening, ownership, and number three, show some empathy. Kind of goes back to the being fe felt, seen, heard, right? That's where all these wounds come up from childhood. And when we're not feeling those things, we get frustrated, we get angry with the other person. And so we want to empathize. What has it been like to be your wife all this time? Like imagine how your behavior has impacted her how it's impacted her behavior, her habits, how it's caused her to go offline. Again, the focus is not on you. It's about on her or your kid in this case, your child. Man, where, man, it must be really hard for them. They, like, I'm almost getting choked up just thinking about it. Like, man, they, they feel so hurt by me because they believe like I did these things. Man, that's, that's crazy. I, I can't imagine, like, you know, your intention was not that, but man, I, I just can't imagine that that, that you're feeling that way. Like that sucks. Now I got to figure out how to be a better leader. Right. And so what has it been like for them? Goes kind of along with the ownership piece, right? So active listening, ownership, empathy. And then the last one, the fourth one is you want to tram. Let me show it, fly it up. Shash, uh, I'm going to flash it up on the screen. You want to transform and repair. Okay. So to kind of wrap things up and give everybody kind of like, okay, I heard everything you had to say, repeat it back. I'm taking ownership for what I did. I can't imagine how that felt for you. And now I totally do. There can be some ease. And now there's that time, that opportunity where you can transform and repair for what's going to happen in the future. So think about what are you going to have to prioritize differently and so that your experiences in the future are going to be different together, right? So if there's a... You know, there could be a lot of frustration, especially with the first responder community of just not being having enough time spent with each other, right? You're always working. You're never around. I, I don't have any time. What do you guys need to do? Let's come up with a solution. Do we need to hire a nanny? Do we need to hire someone? Or you're, you're so stressed. You don't have time for yourself. You, you, you know, that was a big thing for my wife, building in time for her. Her, her cortisol levels, her stress hormones were all to the roof. And, um, you know, her, her cycle was off. We had to come up with a plan. We had to come up with a solution. I thought everything was fine. So what do we need to do? What do we need to do to block and build time so that she can be optimized, right? You know, what if it's, um, I don't know, maybe it's your fitness. Do you need to like lose weight together? Like, is it a health thing? You know, and then to wrap things up, you can put it back on her and say, hey, like, how does this land? How does this sit with you? How does this feel, um, you know? with us, this, does this plan sound, does this sound like a good idea or, you know, you don't want to make it feel like you're just the one that is like, I'm making all the decisions, by the way, being decisive is a key trait as being a leader, but you know, give it back to her. Like, how does this, how does this feel? How does this land? And by the way, in this transform and repair process, sometimes 
you won't even have to do this. Um, maybe there won't be a plan next time. You don't always have to end with this. In certain situations, I think it's very powerful um, to repair things and 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 tell the person like, this is what I'm going to be looking for in the future, because that's a that's a very uh, important process. But sometimes I'll be honest, just the first three active listening, ownership and empathy, like that can go a long way where the person's been felt and seen so much that like you've done all the transforming and repairing, honestly, like you really have. So it just depends on that fourth step if you're going to need to transform and repair. So think about that. Um, let me know how that works in your own relationship and how powerful that's going to be. I promise you it's going to be a game changer. And again, if, if you like this and you want to learn more about this first responder community of men who are sharpening each other's sword, if you're not in the group, just shoot me a DM or shoot me a comment below and just let me know that you want to join and I'll get you in there. And then just be on the lookout also if, you know, I've got a cheat sheet for everything that I'm talking about here. If you want that cheat sheet, same thing, just drop me a line below. Say, Joel, I want the cheat sheet. Can you send it to me? The communication blueprint cheat sheet. Can you send it to me? I'll get that over to you ASAP. Um, it'll be a nice little PDF. You can have that for free. You can use that and start to build the mental blueprint for you and how uh, to really start to transform your family. And I think I'm telling you, it's just this small bit of communication will be so transformational in your own uh, marriage with your family. I use it with my kids. And uh, now I'm starting to train my kids to use this framework. And the more they use it, they're going to be powerful leaders because they're going to be connecting with their own feelings, right? And they're going to be powerful communicators with their with their colleagues, spouses in the future, et cetera. It's a real game changer, guys. I hope this was helpful. Drop me a line. Let me know how it lands. And uh, I'll see you next week.